tonight, London's dog squad is back in action. No, no, you're receiving fox. The war against narcotics. Spaniels leading the way. Children's books, children's makeup, and drugs. Unbelievable. German shepherds hunting for knives. Open the door, please. <laughs> Ten seconds to show yourself. Nelson's career hangs in the balance. And without him, I can't do my job. And Boris wants a job when they send in the dogs. Oh, you're the man. London's war against drugs is relentless. More people admit to using drugs in the capital than any other part of the UK. The Metropolitan Police are cracking down on their use and the dog squad is in the front line. Led by its specialist spaniel sniffer dogs with noses ten times more powerful than a human. 6 a.m. East London. Operations against suspected drug dealers start early. A house possibly being used for the selling of Class A drugs is about to be raided. The spaniel in the back is Paddy. His handler is PC John Lane. Paddy's the main part of the team when it comes to looking for the drugs. He's got the, he's got the nose. He, he can find stuff much better than uh, any human can. So, in all intents and purposes, I'm a chauffeur for Paddy, really. Paddy is a 20-month-old English Springer Spaniel. It took nine weeks to train him to find drugs, cash and firearms. Sniffer dogs like Paddy have been used by the Met since the 1950s because they work harder than almost any other animal. All dogs have got the ability to do the same sort of sniffing out that we use our dogs for, but some of them won't keep going and going and going, whereas Springer Spaniels, Labradors and Cocker Spaniels that we use are gun dog breeds, so they've been bred for centuries and centuries to keep working. But before Paddy can start working, he needs to get through the front door. As usual, the heavy mob, a specialist entry team, will do the honours. Once the raiders have the premises secure and everyone in handcuffs, PC Lane and Paddy can move in. Good boy, Paddy. Way out, that's for sure. Paddy. Even the laundry will be given the once over by Paddy. In North London, the Met are planning another drugs raid. This time, the people thereafter are suspected of dealing cocaine. Once again, the heavy mob will be going in first. Their dog squad searchers are Billy and his partner, PC Derek Beatty. Billy's a two and a half year old Springer Spaniel. He's trained to sniff out drugs, firearms, and cash, and is the eldest of PC Derek Beatty's two dogs. The unruly one is Labrador puppy Boris, a police trainee. He has to sit on the sidelines while Billy gets to work. Billy is calm and dedicated, like many of the Mets' previous 11 Billies. It's been a popular name. Billy 12 is his official title. Uh, he was actually donated to the police uh, by a member of the public. And Billy has certainly got lots of drive. He's very enthusiastic, and, and that's what makes him a good police dog. He, he's very keen to get on and, and do what he's been trained to do. Billy will have to wait a while to do what he's been trained to do. Staying with BCBT in the car while the rest of the team give the suspected cocaine dealers their early morning call. There's a drugs warrant here. Okay, this premises has information there's drugs. We'll place you in handcuffs for the time being, okay? Now that the suspects are sitting uncomfortably, it's time to send in Billy. Puppy Boris thinks he should be allowed to help as well. 
until he's qualified and a fully-fledged member of the dog squad, he can't. There's absolutely no doubt he wants to get involved when I'm taking Billy out of my car to go and do a search. You'll see Boris's nose also there trying to squeeze out and come out with us. Like Boris, Billy's a new boy and is still learning his trade. He's been a drug sniffer dog for only 18 months, so the pressure is on. Good boy, Paddy. There you go. In East London, Paddy is under similar pressure. He's even more of a rookie than Billy, having been sniffing for drugs for less than a year. Paddy's quite a manic dog. He's not one for sitting still. He does run around a lot. He's quite a quick working dog. But I can tell when he goes into a building within the first 10, 20 seconds, whether or not there's anything in there. He's have heightened interest, his tail starts wagging, he's sniffing a lot harder, he's he focused on a particular area. Everything stops, he just points. Good boy, he's a clever boy. Yeah, good boy. This time, Paddy's pointing to the golf bag. It contains more than just clubs and balls, cannabis. First find when you're doing a warrant in the house is the best find for me because that justifies all of those officers coming in, it justifies the door being knocked down, it justifies all the upset that these warrants will cause the uh, occupants of a house. It's becoming clear that the owners of this house don't have people to stay very often. Everyone's guest room's like this, isn't it, I'd imagine? People will hide drugs wherever they think that they won't get found. It's just the nature of the beast. They want to hide it, we want to find it. The house is absolutely chock-a-block with junk which is where the dog comes in handy, because they can sniff it. If it's at the bottom, they get it, so that they won't have to go through all the, uh, that mess in the spare ensuite bedroom that we saw. This is where the dog's coming to their own, really. The initial find means Paddy and PC Lane will leave no part of this house untouched, including the children's bedroom. Thank you. They will hide drugs in absolutely anywhere. Children's nappies, when they've still got them on, uh, carry cots, just to try and evade detection. Paddy may still be young and inexperienced, but he doesn't miss much. Unbelievable. Probably looks like a bit of cocaine, I'd imagine. And that's in the child's hanging up thing that they keep their bits and bobs in, you know. Your children's pencils, children's books, children's makeup and drugs. Absolutely unbelievable. Informants told the police that this house was being used for drug dealing. Paddy's finds so far haven't turned up quantities of narcotics which would secure convictions. However, he has found enough drugs to guarantee that at least two people will be cautioned for possession. But for Paddy and London's dog squad, the job's never done. Coming up. Billy makes a shock discovery. You found bullets? Yeah. And German Shepherd Nelson goes after people with knives. <laughs> Ten seconds to show yourself. <laughs> In North London, PC Derek Beatty and his spaniel Billy are still searching for drugs in the house raided earlier in the day. Billy and PC Beatty are looking for cocaine. The mess they're finding in every room could be deliberate, making it more difficult for sensitive noses. But Billy hasn't been put off. He's a, you're gonna have to have a good look over in this corner. He just keeps coming back over here, but he likes this corner. Billy's relative lack of experience doesn't make things any easier for him or his handler. Sometimes there can be a certain amount of pressure there. But when I go to work with Billy, I, I trust him implicitly. I, I can't do anything else. I've seen him perform, I've seen him find stuff. Uh, to this day, I've never known him to have missed anything. Yeah. Although they haven't found cocaine yet, there are signs of drug use everywhere. There's a pile more needles in here. Some which are capped, some which are uncapped. Just watch them needles. The handcuffed suspects are still being held in the flat, so they can be confronted with any fines. Okay. The 
traces of drug use found by Billy has given everyone hope, but the police are a long way from being able to lay charges of dealing. We've got the sort of stuff we would have been looking for initially. We've got the scales, which is a sign that um, he's weighing up. It's been here, it was here on you. Lots of empty wraps, empty bags. Billy has become fixated by the furniture. Bags, do we it was in this bedroom um, that Billy was all over two items of furniture. One was a, a, a small chest of drawers, and then there was another larger chest of drawers. So I just advised the officers to give these, these drawers a, a, good, a good looking through. The good looking through needs to be done carefully. You never know what you might find. I think there was a big sharps container. Yeah, there is. I've got some uh, blades. And needle points. But needle points aren't the only things concealed in the drawers. Found bullets. Yeah. The officers have found what Billy was really interested in. Done. Live ammunition. This investigation has now taken on an altogether more sinister importance. Yeah, but... Well, that's, that's modified, that, the big one. Yeah. Makes you think, is there a firearm right. here? Yeah. They now need to start looking for any guns which might go with the bullets. Top has been modified. Yeah, the finding of the bullets was, uh, uh, it was totally unexpected. Yeah. When he finds something, I'm over the moon. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Right, that's, that looks like proper ammunition. It does, rather. Yeah, I've got to. Yeah, they're both looking for that, and then when it's slow, it right down, and maybe we can see a lot of proper pulse search. Right, you're further arrested on suspicion of possession of a prohibited ammunition. Are you right? Don't let someone take his head, he's trying to bang his head. Yeah, let's get, get him out into the street, please. Okay. You're right. Get him out into the street. The new charges mean the drug search will have to stop for the time being. A specialist firearms team will be brought in from New Scotland Yard to research the house from top to bottom. Billy has turned up trumps and made a name for himself. It amazes me every day. Any day we go out and we find something, you, you think of all the different smells that may be in a confined space that he can identify the, the one scent that he's been trained to specifically find. And those are fa absolutely fantastic. While Billy takes the praise, his young friend Boris has to continue to make do with a back seat. But the day is surely coming when this young Labrador will be able to show what he's worth. In West London, there's been a stabbing. German Shepherd Merlin and his handler, PC Paul Caruana, have been sent to help. Someone's been stabbed. I don't know how seriously the injuries are. But whether they're serious or not, I mean, there's someone running around with a knife who's quite happy to use it, so that's always going to be a problem. Merlin is an expert at tracking and hunting down villains. He's been a police dog for six and a half years, initially working his magic in Norfolk, before transferring to the Metropolitan Police and joining up with PC Caruana. It's believed that the stabbing is gang related and it will be Merlin and PC Caruana's job to find those responsible. Hey. The police officers who were first on the scene are trying to stop the victim from bleeding to death. Have you got anything at all that we can go with? There was a girl at that school with a black woolen jacket on. Female. Female. Slim. The witness reports are confusing, but have to be followed up. The only thing PC Caruana knows for sure is that three people were involved in the attack. At least one was a woman. One wearing a green hat or jumper. Extra hotel from Fox Shot Zero. Just speaking to one of the witnesses, there was an IC3 female as well. Two males, one female, they've split up. Stabbings are always a top priority in London. 
Police reinforcements are pouring into the area, including another dog unit. PC Andy Miller and his German Shepherd Nelson. PC Miller has been a handler for nine years, and Nelson is his second German Shepherd. Although he's only three and a half years old, Nelson is one of the Met's top dogs. He came fourth in London's latest police dog trials. But there's no competition today. PC's Miller and Caruana will be working as a team. You, know, you get to the area as quickly as you can. You're aware that there's a lot of local units going. You just hope and pray that they're going to get their containment in. Containment means other officers sealing the area as quickly as possible, leaving the dog squad units to scour the streets around the stabbing scene. Eyewitnesses say one of the attackers was wearing a green top. As I've driven past, I've, I've clocked somebody in the sort of peripheral vision with a green jacket on. Yeah, from the dog van on Rutland Road, I've got um, a black male with a green hoodie underneath. Uh, just confirm the descriptions. We've got a dog unit stop with a suspect. Can you give them the description, please? All right, guys. What's the matter? All right, guys, I'm not sure it's uh, you concerned, but we've got uh, an incident around the corner where two people have been involved. Have you got anything on you? You shouldn't have at the moment. PC Miller isn't convinced he's got the right people. But he can't ignore the coincidence of a green hood. Whereabouts have you just been? And it became quickly evident that it wasn't him that, um, that we were looking for. All right, thanks a lot. See you then. Even though they are now running short of suspects, Miller and Nelson can't give up yet. Canine cops like Nelson and Merlin are trained at the dog squad base in Keston on the outskirts of South London. It also doubles up as a pooch hotel. Many dogs stay here when their handlers take a break. German Shepherd Carly has spent the past week enjoying the facilities. Her handler is PC Mandy Chapman, who's been somewhere far more exotic. Yeah, fabulous week skin. Never get that, um, mm, my holiday's over feeling, because the best thing is I'm going to come back and pick Carly. Five-year-old Carly has been working her beat for the last four years. DC Chapman is one of the most experienced officers in the unit. Carly is Chapman's fourth police dog and the one who sits on top of the pile. She's absolutely beautiful. I'm very, very biased, but she is she is the prettiest police dog in the Met, I'm convinced. She's very lively, very, very nice character. She's your best mate, really. PC Chapman's best mate knows something's up. It's exciting, but... And I love sneaking up on the kennels, and you see and she's sitting there, assessing everything still, as she does. And then she spots you, and it's like, oh, is it, is it? Is it? Oh, and then she just goes mad. Hello! Hello, 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 hello! Hello! <laughs> and then she barks at me. She's telling me off for going away or telling me what she's been doing. Who knows? But she goes mad. But the one thing she wants to do, I don't want fuss here, I don't want fuss here. Get me to my car. She want to go? I think she wants to go. I think you want to go. Yeah, look. Yeah. How's that, then? Hey? We're going to settle her down, take her for a little walk, then it's time to get changed and back to work. In West London, the victim of the knife attack is still receiving emergency treatment. But the lifesavers are nearby. London's air ambulance, which not only has paramedics and doctors on board, but can also whisk the critically ill to hospital within minutes. So far, there's no sign of the attackers, and that's bad news for PC Caruana. They've, they've run off in different directions. There's people walking about and people... So no chance of doing any track. So at the moment, we can't do much with the dog. The, the only chance we've got is that we'll stick around here and just do the same as locals, float around, see if someone pops up. If someone does pop up, 
there's now a good chance they'll be spotted from above. The Met's helicopter callsign India 99 and its high-powered thermal imaging camera is now involved. When India 99 and the police dog combine, they are usually a force to be reckoned with. The, the two do play off nicely against each other, and it's the best two resources available to local officers. Although they haven't found those responsible yet. Um, one of the suspects has been located. located. There are some hopeful signs. Can you give us any better location than you have? The dog seems to know where you are. Police suspect has been arrested. Governor! In Nexus Road. Where have you got this other suspect? I don't know where we are, but over my left shoulder, uh, I'm in the block behind, there's a curtain switching. A, a, a witness has seen the uh, female suspect, a possible male suspect, going into there. PC Caruana has a plan. Echo Hotel from Foxtrot Hotel. You need to come back to the scene. The governor is here, he'll brief you. There's a block that uh, they think the suspect might be in. I'll go around the back, or you go around the front, whatever, and we'll at least help them contain it. India 99, you're receiving Fox Drop Zero on this channel. Can you see an easy way for me to get in with the dog to the back of these premises? Down! BC Caruana and Merlin have slipped round the back of the building just in case. When knives are involved, no chances can be taken. Um, Hopefully, if they come over the fence, they're ours. If they stay there, they're going to be next to the ones in front. It'll be Nelson and PC Miller's job to watch that front. We're going to just stand by at the front with the dog. Paul's around the back with his dog. We've got the helicopter overhead if anyone does a runner. But they still don't know if they have the right place. Open the door, please. Ten seconds to show yourself. Good boy. It takes much less than ten seconds to confirm that the people inside aren't the ones the police are after. They're all innocent residents. The female fugitive didn't, as the report suggested, dive into this place after all. Somehow, the three attackers have slipped through the police cordon. Yes, it's frustrating. Sometimes the bad guys get away. I mean, we've got a saying, an expression in the police, where, uh, you know, they'll come again, and inevitably that happens. For London's dog squad, the inevitable is always just around the corner. Coming up, enforcing warrants against dangerous dogs. And the diligent Spaniels continue their war against drugs. Stop there. You've got drugs on your top. Stuff in your pocket. I can't have In South London, PC Mandy Chapman is back in action, getting ready to raid someone's home. Not a drugs operation this time, but the enforcement of a court warrant against the owner of a dangerous dog. A suspected pit bull, which attacked an Alsatian in a park and savaged it so badly that his rear leg was almost torn off. Its owner had to be treated for shock. Pit bulls are not only ferocious, they're often trained fighters and will attack anything that moves. The 1991 Dangerous Dogs Act outlawed pit bulls. You can't have them on the street without special permission from the police. It's also against the law to breed or sell them. They are very aggressive dogs. Everyone says, oh, mine's lovely. An alligator, you get a little baby alligator, it's ever so lovely for ages till the day it decides to eat you. They, they just bite and just latch on. And, and that's the level of, uh, of dog we're dealing with. It's very, very dangerous. So dangerous that Carly will have to sit this one out. We don't use our dogs to deal with other dogs. It's not as if we sort of, our dog's bigger than your dog sort of thing. And we use our expertise in knowledge to seize dogs. PC Chapman has come prepared. A blast from a fire extinguisher often works wonders on even the most vicious dog. Protective clothing is bite-proof. Even though no one's home, they can still enforce the warrant. The officers around the back have spotted the dog. 
or rather the dog may have spotted them. The dog has an injury collar around its neck to protect the wounds it received when passers-by stopped at mauling the Alsatian it savaged. Hello. Hello. It's confirmation that this is the dog they're looking for and the warrant gives them the right to enter the house to seize it. While Carly remains stuck in the back of the van. Elsewhere, another police dog is stretching his legs before he has to go back on duty. Nelson. Named after Britain's great sea lord, three-year-old Nelson's original pedigree name was Majestic Tiger. Four of his six brothers and sisters are also police dogs. Handler Andy Miller believes Nelson is already a top dog, but can get even better. You take a sense of pride and achievement in the fact that you've managed to train your dog to a certain standard. He's just generally a, a really, really good police dog. He's um, he potentially, he can be, he will be very, very good. On a typical shift, Nelson will spend eight hours either on the streets or in the back of PC Miller's van. Exercise breaks are vital, but today, something's wrong. Nelson appears to be limping. It's always a concern if we've got a dog injured. They're, they're pieces of kit, yes, but, you know, without him, I can't do my job. Injuries can lead to time off work for both of them, or even early retirement, if they're bad enough. Now, when he first jumped out, he was really stiff. So then he's warming up a wee bit. It's not too bad. But PC Miller may have spoken too soon. Mm. Ah. <laughs> And that was his back leg. Yeah. Nels, come here. PC Miller knows a lot about dogs, but not enough to diagnose what's wrong. A thorn or something, isn't it? You've just got to be concerned if, if he has got an injury that is not too bad, or by working him, it's not going to make it any worse, you know? There's no question of making it worse. There won't be any working until he's had Nelson checked out by a vet. In South London, Carly's unlikely to pick up an injury in the back of the dog van, but PC Chapman might. Yeah. The dangerous dog she has a warrant for is getting agitated. This is the dog we've come to seize. You can see it's still being treated for its injuries, all the stitches at the side of its face and everything. Um, first thing... Whoever lives in the house either doesn't fear burglars or has lost the key. First thing out is that that cage is in the way when we open this door. Inside the cage that's in the way is another dog, a puppy tethered to the side. He or she might be a pit bull too. And I suggested that we use the cage that was there to, as a barrier, just to push the dog into a smaller area so that then we could just calm things down again, let the dog settle, and then put the catcher on it and lead it, lead the dog out. Oh, all right, fella. Dogs right, like this fella. can be put on a lead. A special pole with a noose is the only way. Oh, good chat. No, just slightly. Oh, yeah, you got him nicely. You happy with one or two? We'll try it one. When you do try to hook the dog, you've got one good chance, because if you miss, there's a good chance it's going to hurt, and it's going to hurt you. It's stressful for the dog, and I hate doing it, but there are occasions you have to. Good puppy dog. Yeah, good dog. Good dog. <laughs> Yay! Good lad. Shh. Good lad. Good lad. Settle down. Um, it'll be examined properly to see if it's a pit bull type. If it is, it's not a good outcome to that, because people know if they've got a pit bull type dog, everything that they should have done. So, luckily, uh, we'll at least get him looked at. It may not be a good outcome for the puppy either. It too will be tested to see if it is a dangerous dog in the making. The officers will also want to question the dog owner about a samurai sword and some unusual house plants they found.
Meanwhile, Nelson and PC Miller are on their way to the vets. For both, it's a worrying time. They're about to start a series of night duties. Three-legged dogs aren't much use in the police force. It's just obviously in a bit. He's working at the moment. He's got two night duties coming up. He's likely to be quite busy, so I just want to make sure he's OK to work. That's it. As a dog handler, without an efficient police dog that, that, that's firing on all cylinders, you're not actually going to have any impact when you do get to a call. So you've got to make sure that your dog's working. Can you He's not reacting no, to anything there. No, really. Usually, if it's if it's worse on uneven ground, yeah, it's usually pairs that are affected. Yeah. He hasn't got any, you know, swelling or anything. Yeah. There. They may have either just bruised his pad or yeah. slightly sprained on the joints there. But there's no no signs of any cuts or anything there. What we'll do is um, let's give him some anti-inflammatories okay. for a couple of days. The anti-inflammatories should enable Nelson to keep working until his leg or paw is fully healed. Until then, PC Miller will have to be careful with him. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Thank you very much. Great. See you again soon. Ta da. Good boy. Yeah, I mean, luckily now he's, uh, we're safe to continue, but um, we just got to be a bit careful, you know. Go away. Up. Good boy. In West London, there's another emergency. Not a stabbing or a drugs raid this time, but car crime. A wanted man is on the run in a stolen car. Police helicopter India 99 is en route. He's going Bridge Road, which is a dead end. Possibly he can. On the ground, Brody and Sergeant Pete Madden are also set to join in the chase. I think it was a uh, high-powered focus that was stolen in a burglary. Near side wheel. Bam. He can. The stolen car has been abandoned on the edge of a large industrial estate, and the driver is on the run. One mile. Teddy uh, from uh, Echo Zero, I'm, I'm here. Uh, suspects last seen heading through the car park. Did you see him going across some um, corrugated roofing? They've gone directly on the car park. Indian 99 is the right hand side. Right hand side. It looks like the driver has already been caught, but not yet subdued. That could be a job for Brody, but she is still minutes away. I've now got the suspect detained. Even with the runaway in custody, Brody and Madden might yet be needed if there was more than one man in the car. That's as far as he got. I don't know if he was hoping to take that down, but uh, that wasn't going to happen. On this side, he's, he's lost his tyre off, uh, off the wheel. So that wasn't going much further. Recovery, please, called Focus SP. We believe it's possibly a clone plate. The tax disc in the window is November X-ray 07. If you want to run the car that is being used as a burglar's getaway vehicle in various parts of London. It's Willow actually from Bale in Cheshire. Cheshire? Right. Stolen 1st January. Yes, this was stolen from about 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 30 January. stolen from a burglar in Cheshire on the 1st of January, so now we'll, uh, we'll recover it, do forensics on it. Um, and see what we pick up. But uh, it's interesting that it's, yeah, that it's stolen as far away as, as Cheshire. And certainly it's been floating around, causing problems down here and involved in burglaries down here for the last few days. For waiting patiently, Brody gets to stretch his legs in the park, even though he wasn't used in this job. The arrest of a dangerous driver and recovery of a stolen vehicle is a good result for everyone. In central London, another dog team is looking for a good result. The Spaniels are back in action in the frontline war against drugs. Come on, big fella. PC John Lane is at one of London's busiest rail stations with his Springer Spaniel, Woody. Woody is six years old and specially trained to detect drugs on people. He was bred at the Mets Dog School and PC Lane has had him since Woody was just eight weeks old. Woody's best friend is Paddy, PC Lane's second police spaniel. Woody's also an English Springer, but he's been taught to search premises rather than human beings.
The way most people tell them apart is by Woody's distinctive and unusual nose colouring. Hello, hello, hello. This is a stop and search operation involving four officers, PC Lane and Woody. The police don't want people to use the tube to either take drugs or move them about. Almost four million people use the London Underground every weekday. Alex, sir, just come past the dog for us. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's just me and the dog walking up and down. You can feel that you've got officers there all watching, waiting for the dog to do something, and you have a quiet period for sort of half an hour or 40 minutes. Then you do start to feel a little bit pressurised and you start getting a little bit sweaty palms because you know you're being watched by these officers and the whole operation is on that dog. PC Lane already has sweaty palms because the quiet period is here. Coming up... <laughs> Boris the Labrador puppy tries to join the dog squad. So the environment's overcoming the picking up of the ball. <laughs> Keston is the headquarters of London's dog squad and where the Met's top drugs dogs are taught their craft. Today, Springer Spaniel Billy and Labrador Boris have come to see their bosses with their handler PC Derek Beatty. Although they're both here, Boris is the one who's actually in the spotlight. Billy's lending moral support, as Boris sees whether he can graduate from puppy kindergarten to the big dogs training school. Uh, he's now come up for about 12 months old uh, and has recently uh, been within the puppy program with a view to him becoming a, a passive scanning dog, uh, drugs. Days like this are vital for Boris if he's going to become a fully-fledged police dog in three months' time. Boris was born and bred in Met Police Kennels and handed to PC Beatty when he was just eight weeks old. Labradors make good search dogs because they have a calm and careful temperament. Boris gets his name from one of London's best-known political figures. We've named him Boris purely because he, his, his coat reminded us of, of Mayor Johnson and his blonde locks. Uh, and I suppose he's got a similar personality. He's very lively uh, and very mischievous. I've found him wandering all around my house and he has somehow managed to open doors and go and retrieve slippers, bags, handbags, shoes, you name it, and left them in a nice little pile for us when we've come home. Boris. No one knows whether Mayor Johnson has exactly the same traits, but he and his namesake do have one thing in common, a desire for public service. Boris the Labrador really wants to be a police dog. Dog trainers call this an environment suite. It's a special examination room with all sorts of different and difficult surfaces and levels. Um, it's quite literally go up the stairs, get a ball, but it, obviously he's got to negotiate the stairs, but then we'll move the ball along, so then he's got a problem solved, like the old squirrel chasing the nuts. Yes, sir. <laughs> this young pup won't be chasing nuts. Tennis balls is what he's going to be trained with. Lesson one, retrieve the ball from increasingly more unusual parts of the room. Firstly, by climbing an open stepladder, a common obstacle when going after criminals and one which even the bravest and most experienced police dog finds daunting. When you're only eight months old, and not even a rookie, it can be terrifying. I mean, it has been known for dogs just to completely freeze and, and not go up, especially those open rung stairs, because there's nothing there for them to focus on. All they can see is, is, is air on the other side. It is a, an unusual uh, feeling for them. It's amazing, this. <laughs> yeah, no, you'll go up. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Good OK, boy. and if you go and get hold of him, just... Uh... Carry him off of there, save him jumping down. Boris might have cracked the getting up bit, but the coming down is something else. Good. You're right, Doc. Good boy. Excellent. And if you just hold him there a sec. Good oh boy. <clears throat> Boris has made it to first base, but the assessment has only just begun. In central London, 
Woody and his handler, PC Lane, are also under pressure as they continue to look for drugs on the tube. They've been scanning passengers for 20 minutes with nothing to show for it. Stop there, mate. Stop there. It's a drug cell. You got drugs on your top? Split in your pocket. OK, no problems. Let's have a word with my colleagues there and they'll look after you, all right? Just keep your hands where they can see them. Since cannabis was upgraded from Class C to Class B, even a spliff in a pocket gets checked out. You got any sharks or anything on you? Commuters found with drugs on them face either a fine or arrest. It all depends on the amount and the class. Thanks, sir. Nothing else on you at all. No, no, we'll deal with that in a second, mate. All right, mate, just come past the door. Don't look so worried. That's great. Thank you very much. That's it. Go. Go, go, go. Stop there first, please. This is a drug stop. Have you got any drugs on you, Tom? No, no, Have you smoked any swift today? Yeah. You smoked a bit earlier on, did you? Yeah, mate. Just put your hands together for us. Right, These officers will give you a quick search, all right? Yeah. Just a couple of just take it out of the way slightly, OK? Woody's nose is so sensitive that even the merest whiff of an inhaled drug is enough to set him off. So he smokes it how long ago? Uh, about one o'clock. Let the dog come past. Thank you. When she was two and she was 12 when she died. Stop there for us, mate, please. It's a drug stop. Do you have any drugs on you at all? No. Have you smoked some today? Yeah. Oh, OK, was that early on? Just have a word with my colleague behind. He's right. going to give you a quick search, OK? Right. Thank you. Right. Come over here and we'll talk to you about what, what's happening. Good boy, buddy. Yeah. Woody, other end sniffing, that's it. Well done. We got in it. Woody believes he's found someone else who might have drugs. But the man seems disorientated. OK, have you had a lot today? Did you seem a little bit your eyes were looking? No, no, I didn't. Please. These two bags could contain cannabis. For Woody, they're a cause for celebration. Dogs treat all as a game. We're working to find the drugs and to put the baddies away and convict them, and they're working to get their tennis ball and play with Dad and have some fun. While Woody enjoys his ball, the detained man isn't having any fun. Sorry, did you say you've been arrested before? Not really. Yeah, what was that for? I can't remember. You can't remember? Have you been to court? Court. Yes. Yeah, I think you are going to court for that. For what? I forgot what it was. See, I think you're lying to me now. No, I don't right? like that. I think honestly, that you are lying. Listen, you can't remember what you've been arrested for. You I think you've been to court. Uh, it's been a couple of years. And what, you can't remember what you've been to court? I can't remember what I did yesterday. Right, yeah. well, we'll see what's going to happen to you. But... The man won't be allowed to continue his journey or be dealt with by way of a fixed penalty. He's going to the police station for further questioning. At Dog Squad headquarters, well, Boris still has a long Let's way to go before he will be allowed to search commuters at railway stations. He's still trying to find his tennis balls. I can't then let him go. Oh, I know you know how to get it. Yay, he's a good boy. Good boy. Come down as well. Good You're a man. Boy. Coming down as well means Boris has overcome the scary open stairs. It's becoming all too easy. Make it a little bit more difficult. OK, let him go. See if he can work out how to get there. Working it out means Boris having to use logic and lateral thinking and hold his nerve again. Oh, you clever boy. The sort of locations that Boris is likely to be working in are places like uh, rail stations, nightclubs, football grounds. Those areas have got very many different sort of floor surfaces, so it's important that the dog it hasn't got any fear getting to and from a location, because uh, it can affect his working. So the environment's overcoming the picking up of the ball. Boris's ball is now on a part of the course which has a see-through grid, just like the see-through stairs. If Boris can't pass this test, he'll not be going anywhere fast. Yeah, good, good boy. boy. Good boy. Excellent, Del, that'll do, mate. That's, that's good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy Boris has graduated. Good boy. Yeah, I've got no doubt Boris will, will make a, a, a good police dog. He, he's got the character, he's got the enthusiasm, uh, and, yeah, I think he'll, be, he'll do very well. Couldn't read a paper or something. Boris's character will be severely tested. But if he does go on to join the 250 or so dogs who help police Britain's capital city, he will find himself dealing with more than just tennis balls. 
in the frontline fight against crime. No one was charged with the stabbing of the man in the street in North London. He knew who did it, but wouldn't press charges, and the Crown Prosecution Service dropped the case. The dangerous dog seized by PC Chapman is still in police custody, awaiting a court hearing to decide his fate. And Nelson's bad leg responded to the vet's injection. He and PC Miller are now back in action on the streets of London, chasing the bad guys.